in Edinburgh for after about a year I only had about 40 customers I thought well I think the thing to do since my wife is more or less booting me out of the house which is a whole other story and um, um, and I don't have enough customers and I think what I'll do is I'll do a publicity stunt and get a bunch of customers in one swell swoop and um, I'll buy a massive Highland tent, erect it on Portobello Beach in front of the swim center which, to which I visit from time to time for swimming and put a piano in there and use, have it be a public piano for anybody to use and I'll sleep behind it someplace. Nobody won't be in anybody's way, but they'll have a public piano. Yeah, you're not going to sleep there tonight, are you? I'm going to um, play trombone during the day and then sleep at night. Well, what if the water comes right up? Then I'll be cleaner than I am today, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, I've never seen Fife before. <laughs> so I did that, and I was there for five months, and... In five months, I got one, one tuning customer from that whole thing, but I gained some notoriety. That's how, that's how I happened to go. I met hundreds of people that came by. The Scots are a bit um, reticent and hesitated to go inside the tent when I wasn't there, um, because even though it said enter in big letters with exclamation marks, by the door, and it said Portobello People's Public Piano Project. They still were too polite to w walk in, which was a drag because the whole idea was it was their piano to use. They, they could do everything they wanted but take it away, and they couldn't take it away, could they? Because <laughs> it was too heavy. <laughs> so um, the Portobello authorities told me to move on, um, and I did. But I moved to Cramond Beach on the theory that you could camp anywhere in Scotland except for Portobello Beach, is what I thought. But apparently that wasn't so true either. But they were having, they weren't quite as aggressive. The lawyers in Cramond Council were not quite as aggressive as the ones in Portobello. Um, so I was able to stay there for a nice couple of months. And I think I lost another appeal or something. And I was told I had to move out of that place, too. So I did, uh, last March. But then I was fully planning on leaving the piano there, because it was an ideal spot to have a public piano, and a very good piano, the same one that I have in my living room here. Well, the reason that the living room has my piano and not the tent is because as I was moving my personal stuff out, some alcoholic youth came by and they slashed the back of the tent up one night and I got there in the morning and it was drizzling on my piano and plus they took my trombone which I've been practicing uh, over the months a lot more than I had in my last 50 years it's, uh, you can make as much noise as you want on the beach at night and um, they took that and they, I think they either burned it or smashed it, but anyway, it was gone. I found fragments of, of it around. It was a, not a brass trombone, a plastic one called the P-bone, a great thing. So I told myself, you know, if that plastic trombone ever get, goes stolen, I think I'll end the project. So I took down the tent. I called Capital Piano Movers. Jerry Love came and moved the piano um, to my new flat. I got a new flat around that time. This is where we are now. Just, you hang up your clothes there. Cramond was the end of the public piano project. Uh, after the kids slashed the tent, I took the piano to my new flat. But about a month earlier, 
uh, my friend, well, the, the original Portobello People's Piano Project Piano was a German upright that I figured was worth two pounds 99p. So I took it out to the beach figuring nothing, if something bad happened to it, it would be okay. Um, but while it was there, I, I fixed it up because I had nothing better to do during the day. And I got it working rather nicely. And it turned out to be quite a beautiful piano, quite a beautiful sounding piano, although it was ugly to look at. So I raised the price to three pounds 99p and I sold it to a, a friend of mine that runs a cafe in Haymarket. Well, about a month before um, I left Cranham Beach, he got evicted from the restaurant. And the piano was sitting there and he said, Ben, what should we do with it? I said, this is good. It's going to be a public piano, David. <laughs> so we moved it outside his shop. It was pouring with rain half the time, but the people in the pub nearby covered it with a tent we left. We left a, te a tent to cover it with a plastic sort of tent thing. So they covered it up at night and it was there for weeks. And then um, one day the pub reported that the council had come by, by and taken the piano away. So that was the end of that one. Uh, it, it's just something that comes natural to me. I don't know why it's a good idea. I, I, it first occurred to me in the mid-1990s. Uh, this is in San Francisco before I moved to New York. So me and the movers um, declared ourselves pianarchists and moved those pianos, the extra ones that we didn't want to take to Cuba, um, to Golden Gate Park, and we tied them to trees. We just left them there for the hippies to play, or people to play. So I just was um, pursuing that tradition of having a piano outdoors for people to play. When, when I go to, through Heathrow, there's a couple of public pianos there that are shamefully out of tune, by the way. And I love them. You know, I, play, I play my pathetic little Beethoven thing, and other people play quite well, and it's nice. It passes the time. It's a good idea. It was very good. I saw it. I mean, I visited there. Uh, uh, you know, I hung around there for a while. I just didn't sleep there. I slept somewhere else. But I think it was a great idea. I'm just sorry that the council was so bullheaded and charged him so much of a fine. I mean, that was really crazy. It was actually a good thing for Portobello. It was a great advertising and a great advertising for public pianos, which is really important. So I thought their behavior was, was pretty bad. Okay, they I'm didn't want him there. on the beach. They didn't want him on the beach. It was against the law to be on the beach. Okay, he agreed to go. We went to court. I was actually his barrister in court. I represented him in court, and um, the judge was really fantastic. She was great. And then she said she realized he was too skint to uh, pay anything. Blood but from a stone, she said. Yeah, she said you can't get blood from a stone, but the horrible lawyer for the council, she was really a tight ass, wasn't she? She had a, a rod up. She um, came claiming that he was having to pay multiple thousands of pounds as a fine. And they still haven't gotten off of that. And they should just let him court work costs, it off. Court costs. Court costs. Sorry, court costs. But they should let him off. Um, it wasn't his fault that they were court costs. They're the ones that started well, the court well, thing. Well, what I suggested was, um, could I work it off in piano tuning for the yes. council school? Yeah, yeah. And they basically said no. <laughs> so so, so now they're not getting anything, unless they change their mind about the pianos. It's really a stupid attitude. Anyway. That's what I think. I'm going to stick around Edinburgh myself and um, build my tuning practice and build my nice relationship with my children. Mm -hmm.